Okay, this is uh, area and volume. I'm going to be just covering some basics with area and volume. And uh, we've also got uh, an area and volume um, overview here in the formula sheet. Um, so we'll be referring to that quite a bit as we go through. Um, now, uh, area and volume are two uh, mathematical um, definitions. Uh, in fact, you could even have length, area, and volume <clears throat> because uh, it's, a, it's got a lot to do with dimensions. Now, you've probably heard about, you know, you have a, have a plane with an x-axis and a y-axis. This is uh, Cartesian geometry stuff. Now, if you have a tape measure, you can measure the length, say, of a room, maybe call that the x-axis, and um, let's say it's uh, 4,000 millimetres long. And, and we measure this we measure the width of the room and we find that it's 3,000 millimetres long. So you're going to lay a floor in here and you think, okay, well, let's work it out. How many how many millimetres of flooring do I need? Well, we go to the hardware store. They're not going to know what you're talking about when you say you need 16 million square millimetres of floor. So first thing we want to do is pick some sensible units. Like let's make it in, instead of 4,000 millimetres, let's just call it four metres and three metres. So if we split it up into metres, there was four of them this way, and there was three of them that way. In fact, if we were to plot those metres out all the way across the floor, and we wanted to lay one metre square mats on the floor, we need 12 of them, because you can see we need three, and four rows of three, or three rows of four. So either way, it's either three times four, or it could be four times three, doesn't matter the order, still get the same number, 12. So in this case, we've got 12 square metres. So the reason it's called a square metre is because it is a square. So one of these metres is a perfect square, and that's one metre high and one metre long. That is why we say every time we say anything in area we say something squared so area is in units squared it could be squared millimeters squared meters squared whatever it's millimeter squared we write it like that or meter squared you could even have inches squared if you're working in inches or feet squared doesn't matter it's always squared so whenever you're doing area you should have an answer in square square kilometres even. <clears throat> so uh, most of the time be metres or millimetres. By the way, we don't use centimetres, no such thing. Centimetres do not exist. There's no centimetre. Uh, that's because it's not in the metric system. We do everything by thousands. So we go millimetres, a thousand millimetres is a metre, a thousand metres is a kilometre, etc. So, and if we're going down the other way, a millimetre a thousandth of a millimetre is a micron so we're going micro metres then millimetres then metres then kilometres you'll notice that's all factors of a thousand so we're here times in a metre by a thousand of course uh, there's the actual metre and here we're dividing the metre by a thousand and here we're dividing the metre by a million So that's why centimetres don't exist. You will find centimetres uh, usually from Europe, particularly Germany. They tend to use uh, centimetres a fair bit. Um, it's actually a fairly convenient little unit because it's sort of like a bit bigger. The millimetres are small, but we don't use them. Too confusing anyway, especially when it comes to squaring them. All right, so um, now let's have a look at some of the area formulas. Now, to do a rectangle, it's very easy. We just multiply the base times the height. So the area of a rectangle or anything rectangular, making sure that it's 90 degrees in there, of course. If it's not 90 in there, then it doesn't count. You're not allowed to do it. So provided we have a 90 degree corner everywhere, then you can just multiply the length times the height. But it has to have 90 degree corners or perpendicular. This is the other word. Perpendicular. So 
have a look at some of the formulas for um, calculating these. Just going to grab this thing. I'm going to write all over this. Get from yeah. Done. Let's have a look at some of the examples of area. <clears throat> so that's this first column here. If it's a square, then the area is just the, the side, the length of the side um, squared. Uh, well, I mean, if it's a rectangle, it's, it's the base times the height or the width times the height here. Um, and if, if they both happen to be the same, then it's W times W, which is exactly the same as the first one. <clears throat> so we've got an example here. If it's five centimetres, one, two, three, four, five of them. <clears throat> and we've also got five going upwards as well, so altogether 25. Um, in the case of a rectangle, if the width is 10, so we've got 10 along that way and 20 up this way, then when we multiply those together, we've got 10 times 20 is 100. Hey, watch this. Speaking of area, the numbers go up pretty quick. Imagine a fly screen window, right? This is what you do in lockdown when the kids are getting really annoying. What you do is you give them a job. I want you to count all the squares on the fly screen, right? Then let's say the window is um, make this keep the numbers easy. Let's just do a thousand by a thousand, a meter by a meter, right? Keep it easy. So that means now fly screen is about one millimeter. So there will be a thousand that direction. There'll be a thousand that direction if it's a one meter square window. All right. So Johnny's busily counting up the squares, right? And let's say he does one per second. How long is it going to take him to count all the squares on the fly screen? Well, there's going to be a thousand times a thousand. So that's a thousand squared, which is a million. So he's got one million squares to count. And if you work out how long that's going to take, this should make a good question. Yeah. Did I get count? Come on. It's not that hard. Because <laughs> I typed in the dumbo. Alrighty, a thousand times a thousand equals a million. Alright, so uh, that'll take a million seconds, which is divided by 60. It's 16,000 minutes divided by 60 again. It's 277 hours divided by 24. So it's going to take 11, 11 and a half days non-stop. That's no sleep. That should keep him busy. So it's funny, eh? One window has that many squares. got a million squares on it. Area um, numbers can get pretty big. All right, area of a triangle is a half. Now, the interesting thing about the triangle here is it can be any shape. So, but you, the two dimensions have to be perpendicular. That's all. That's the rule. But it turns out that the triangle can also be skew with. Like it could be like this, a little bit off, not symmetrical like the one they've drawn there. And it still works so long as the H is that one, the perpendicular height. You can't use one of the sides. It's got to be perpendicular height. So it's really just... Um, base times perpendicular height, so long as height is perpendicular there. That's the important bit. And you just have it. That's it. Now, the reason that's true is because imagine if you did have a triangle. We'll, we'll just do a really simple, clean one. If you had a triangle that 
was like a right angle triangle like that. This is your height, obviously. And this is your base. And if you if that was a rectangle, it would it would go up here, right? That that would be the rectangle version of it. <clears throat> and the area of the rectangle is b times h, whereas the triangle is exactly half a rectangle. So that's why it's a half of b times h, uh, which is the formula we get so we're just dividing by two. So that triangles are actually pretty easy. Then we have a circle. Circles have this special number called pi, which is a Greek letter, for P. And it's, uh, it's a magic number for converting lines to circles. The actual definition of pi comes from the diameter of a circle compared to the circumference of the circle. So if the circumference is C and the diameter is D, then the circumference is pi d. So you just multiply the diameter times pi and you get the circumference, that's a d. And it turns out to be 3.141. I didn't give much, uh, 5, 9. I didn't give much accuracy there, only 3.14. 1, 5, 9, 2, keep going, 6. Five, three. You can get your calculator out and get lots of decimal places. That's about as many as I can remember. It goes on forever, apparently. So um, pi never ends. It just keeps having random digits too. It doesn't even repeat, which is pretty interesting. So uh, it turned. So that's to find circumference. Yeah, but we're not trying to find circumference. We're trying to find area. Well, some brainiac has worked out the equation for working out the number of squares in the circle now they're going to be all over the place because they get chopped up so there'll be a little bit of and then it's partial squares elsewhere so it's not that easy to work out the equation for area of a circle you need to use some um, other maths to find that out so that fortunately they did their work for us and they gave us the equation area is pi r squared now notice the r which would be in millimeters is squared. Now all of these are all unit squared. That's the, that's the key here. Everything to do with area is unit squared. <clears throat> so I should always be squaring my units. Have a look at this equation. It's A times A. There's a squared. Yeah, there's a square. Here we have millimeters times millimeters. So it ends up being millimeters squared. So everything is squared. Here we have base times height, millimeters squared. We have it, but it's still squared. So everything in the areas, everything to do with the area is squared. All right, so I think that pretty much covers all of the possible um, examples that you're going to get to do with, um, oh, it's already on that page, to do with area. Um, whatever units uh, you're given, you may need to uh, fix up the units. For example, if they gave you a problem like this, they said, um, I want you to work out the area of this thing. Let's say it's a rectangle, and it's um, 100 millimetres this way. That's in millimetres. And it's 17 centimetres that way. What's the answer? Well, you're not allowed to multiply millimetres times centimetres. That is not a square. Remember, it's supposed to be squared. Well, that's not a square because a millimetre times a centimetre would look something like this. That's like a matchstick. All right, that's not a square. So you have to use the same units. You have to pick which one you want to use and make sure you can answer in those units. Normally, as I said, centimetres are bad. That's for dressmaking or something. Um, Measuring your waist, or I don't know. What do people use centimetres for? But we should be using millimetres. So you need to convert that one across. That's not ready. We want to use 170 millimetres. Now you can multiply them. <clears throat> My pen's gone slow again. All right. Area squared. Now, what about volume? Volume is cubed.
How annoying is this pen? All right, so volume is um, the unit. Let's say we keep working in millimeters. But it's going to be cubed. Just think of uh, working when you when you're specifying the volume of an engine. Let's say it's a, a motorbike and it's a 500 cc. So 500 cubic centimeters. Whoops, there's that unit that I said we never use. So cubic centimeter cc. Now when they say cubic, that's that's an actual cube. So it'd be like we measured our volume in sugar cubes. They're about a centimeter cube. That's it would fit 500 sugar cubes in it. In fact, if you got 500 sugar cubes, smashed them up and put them in, they'd probably fit. <clears throat> probably not very good for your engine though. All right, so units in, oh, this, oh, that's surface area. Forget the green column, we're talking about the red column now. The units in volume will be cube. Let me change colors to blue. So volume is in cubic units. So the volume for a cube is really just a square. It's, this, it's A along this way, it's also A upwards and it's also A in depth. Every dimension on the sides is all the same. Oop, that's supposed to be an A. It's all this. A, let's make it this one. Everything's A. All right, so the volume here will be A times A times A, or volume is A cubed. All right, so notice the word cube and the um, mathematical term cubing something is the same just like it was with squared. When we say something squared, what we're saying is power of two. You know, like in pi r squared, we say pi r squared. You just use the word square because you're referring to measuring things in squares. Now, when it comes to volume, you say, oh, a cubed. Well, mathematically, you said cubed, but you're referring to a cube. You're splitting it up into little cubes. So the units, let's say it's millimetres, or in this case centimetres, uh, would be cubes. Cubic centimetres are nice because they're about the same size as a sugar cube. <coughs> cubic millimetres are pretty small. All right. <coughs> uh, now, there is a rule, a basic rule for anything that has um, a, a, what we call a prism that has whatever shape is on the bottom, doesn't matter what the bottom shape is. We've got this, some random shape here. If you can work out the area of that, you're doing well, but that's not the problem here. Let's say we know what that area is. We've worked it out. If we're trying to find the volume, all we have to do is, is volume will always be area of the base times the height. That's it. That's the rule. So if you go back to this cube, the area of the base is just a squared, and you multiply by the height, which is a again, so it's a squared times a, which is a cubed. And so that's that's a rule for any type of prism. We, the, the word prism means whatever the shape is, it goes up straight. Okay, that's what a prism is. So it could be um, a triangle on the bottom and goes up, that would be a triangular prism. It could be a square that goes up, well, that would be a square prism, which has its own name, it's a cube, if it's the same height. Or if it goes up a different height, now you've got a rectangular prism. Or it could be a rectangle at the bottom that goes up a distance. Once again, that's a rectangular prism. What do we call a circular prism? So it's a circle at the bottom, and it goes up straight, some height. That's a circular prism. But we have a special name for that one. It's a cylinder. If I do running writing, it works. So we have some special names for those things, but um, they're all prisms because they all go up straight. So it's a rectangular prism, a triangular prism, a rectangular prism, and in this case, circular prism, which is a cylinder. You can even have... Uh, multi-sided ones, you know, like a pentagonal prism, five sides. No, I'm doing hexagonal. Hexagonal prism, there we go. And you, if you prism that,
then you've got a hex, then you've got yourself a hexagonal prism. Just have to work out the area in here. And once you've got that area, you can then multiply by the perpendicular height. Don't forget, it's always perpendicular. You can't multiply them if they're not perpendicular. All right. So that's the volume for prisms. Now the next one is a pyramid. Now a pyramid is like a prism, but instead of going up straight, it goes to a point. And whenever it goes to a point, you divide by three. That's the rule. Remember with uh, triangles, if you have a triangle back here, we divide it by two. Remember that? Well, that's sort of like going to a point, isn't it? It's a rectangle that goes to a point. That means you halve it in area. When it comes to volume, if the rectangle or the square, or whatever it is at the bottom, um, goes to a point, then the volume is a third. You divide by three. And once again, some mathematician did some fancy maths to give us that formula. Thank you very much. And the same applies to anything that's a, like a pyramid, any shape that is a pyramid. So let's have a look at some of the shapes that are pyramids. Now, there are a few special ones. Uh, of course, a square pyramid is, you know, like the pyramids in Egypt. That's a square pyramid. Not sure if it's exactly. That's some funny things. All right, so <coughs> um, that's just called a pyramid. What about this one? What do we call a circular pyramid? What's that? Okay, that has its own name, which is a cone. So how do I work out the volume of a cone? The volume is the area of the bottom, which is, we already know, the equation pi r squared, and we multiply by the perpendicular height, it has to be perpendicular, and then divide by three. So the, the volume for a cone, you can work it out yourself, will just be area times height divided by three. And how do we work out area? Well, we have that equation from the previous bit. We've already done area. That comes from here and this one. Pi r squared. So we can we already know how to do that. All right. So we have uh, there are a couple of other pyramids too. You can have an equilateral triangle pyramid, but every size is equilateral. That's called a tetrahedron. Um, and how do we work out the volume of that? Same old way. One third of the base area times the height. So you'd have to work out the perpendicular height, which is a little bit tricky. All right, so those are two general rules. They're the only two rules that I can think of that are generalized. When it's a prism, it's base times height. Very easy. When it's a pyramid, which means it goes to a point, it's base times perpendicular height, even if it's skewed, even if it's like, like it did with the triangle, well, the same happens with the volume, uh, even if it's not straight, as so long as you get perpendicular height. Okay, then leaves us with um, one more, which is our sphere. Sphere has its own equation for volume. Once again, uh, someone's done the maths for us and worked out the equation. There's the equation there. This time it's four thirds pi r cubed. Notice that it's cubed again. We've got keep getting this cubed all the time. Why is that? Because we're measuring in cubics, cubic centimeters, cubic millimeters, etc. So <clears throat> the four thirds. Some mathematician found out that the ratio there is four thirds. So you'd have to find that out using calculus or something like that. Now volume goes up crazy fast because you thought the fly wire was bad you should see what happens with if you have one millimeter cubes and you're counting up a, a cubic meter of one millimeter so let's say we did have a great big cubic meter and we're trying to work out how many cubic millimeters there are so a little tiny box of a cubic millimeter 
So one millimeter cubed. How many of those are there in a cubic meter? So in this case, one cubic meter equals. So on each side we have a thousand. So there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. So there's a thousand along there. And there's a thousand on each side. So every side is multiplied together. So just like we do for a cube, it's going to be a thousand cubed. So what is that number? One zero 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 to the power of three. Okay, what is that? That's a billion, a thousand millions. It's actually the American billion, by the way, which we pretty much um, converted to. So it's one billion. Now, if I was to uh, ask somebody to start counting up to a billion by one a second, it's going to take them a thousand times as long as counting up to a million, which you just did. We just did the counting up to a million one, which took, what's it again? Painfully slow in. Counting up to a million took uh, 11 and a half days. So we need a thousand lots of those. So it's going to be a couple, it's going to be a few years to count up to a billion. Uh, by the way, initially, originally, uh, the English billion was a million millions, which is the American trillion. Um, and then the Americans, I don't know, they like the word billion. So um, mostly due to financial and also uh, computers um, using megabytes, gigabytes, da, da, da. So the billion became known as thousand millions and, and the Americans pushed the British out the way. And so most of the world now uses billion as a thousand million. So America won the argument. So there you go. <clears throat> so a trillion now is a million millions. So it goes up by a thousand, which is kind of OK, because it sort of matches the metric system going by thousands. And uh, an English trillion would be virtually impossible to get to. So that would be a billion billions. That's a crazy huge number. OK. Now surface area is the last one here, which is the green column. Surface area, basically, you're adding up the areas of each of the faces of the object. So you'll have to know how much area is in one face and then multiply by how many faces you get. Now, it's quite easy if, the, if there's a regular shape because they're all the same. So for a cube, of course, the surface area will just be A squared, which is one face. That's A squared, and which is this one here. And there's six faces because it's a cube, just like a dice. And so uh, we get six lots of A squared, pretty easy. The prism, not so easy because we don't know how to do the areas of every weird face around here. Sometimes it's not too hard, like the example of a cylinder. If we're working out the surface area of the cylinder, what do we have to do? We have to work out the area of the top and the area of the bottom. All right, so to do those, we're going to have two lots of pi R squared. And that's, um, we haven't finished yet though, because that's only the top and bottom. Now we've got to do the wrap around. So let's cut it, say, and then we're going to go from here, we're going to go right around the perimeter of the circle and then unwrap it. So that'll end up being a rectangle. So that's the height of the cylinder and that's the circumference of the ends. So we've got H here and circumference here. So so that's the two that's the two faces, the little two round ends. Plus we have to add the wrap around, which is going to be H times now what is circumference? We've already done that, so over here, from this formula here, circumference is pi d, so H times pi. Times d. So, a fairly complicated little formula, but you can uh, work it out from 
first principles. Yourself, you just have to uh, think of all the areas and we have to split it up into three pieces here, a top, a bottom, and the wraparound side, which is a rectangle if we're trying to make. Just think of trying to make that thing out of, <coughs> out of steel or something. That's how much steel that you need, surface area. Surface area, quite important um, calculation sometimes, particularly in, in sheet metal um, stuff. Surface area of a pyramid. Now, once again, just like the prisms, we don't always know how to calculate the area. For example, the surface area of a cone is going to be a bit nasty. All right, if you develop a cone, you've got this weird looking shape around the surface here. So we're not going to bother with the equations for surface area of a cone. We'll just look at this straight pyramid one. You need to work out the area of one of the sides, like this side here, for example. And we've also got the area of the base. So we've got four sides, they're all the same. And we've got one base, so it'll be four lots of those plus bottom. <clears throat> and the surface area of a circle, which is given here, once again, somebody had to sit down and write that equation. Now, what you'll notice in the whole of this column, when we're doing surface area, what are the units? They're squared. The units are squared here. Why they're squared? Because it's actually area. We're saying surface area. So it's not surface volume, there's no such thing. It is the area of a plane or is the surface or the sum of all the surfaces. Once again, that's in area. So everything should be squared here. So it's two dimensions multiplied together or something squared, pi r squared, for example, here. So if the surface area was you know, the blah, 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 pi times r cubed, it can't be right because you can't have a cubic unit for an area. It has to be a squared. <clears throat> All right, so um, when, you, when you're doing a problem, um, there's a few things to remember. Let me just type some uh, things just to, just to summarise this. Things to remember. I don't think we'll like purple. Okay, um, make sure all units are the same. You have to stick with one unit all the way through. You can't have a mixture, no mixtures of units. It does not work. Okay, we have um, we have those two rules about um, base and height. Um, area is squared. Is those, those are great words to use because they work in maths and they also work in uh, in real life. We know what a square looks like. We know what a cube looks like. All right, so they're the three. The other three points to always keep in mind, if you've, if you've got an equation, you're trying to work out volume and it says something rather squared, you've got the wrong equation. And likewise, if you're doing an area and something's cubed, that must be the wrong equation as well. You have to be squaring to get area. You have to be cubing to get volume. <clears throat> All right, so we'll leave it there.